This is my mom's podcast for meiosis. Enjoy. Okay, hopefully that was a little bit different. So like he said, we are going to cover meiosis. So we're going to talk about some basics. And we're going to be looking at chromosomes, specifically homologous pairs. And when we talk about homologous pairs, in most instances, we're going to have one from the mom, maternal, and one from the father, paternal. Now, when it replicates, you're going to notice that it's going to be very similar to the cell cycle that we covered for mitosis. So remember back for interphase is G1, S, and then G2, and then it went into mitosis, but now we're going to go through meiosis. The four steps are still going to be the same PMAP, but we'll cover that in just a moment. So the chromosomes are going to replicate during the S phase preceding, which means to come before meiosis. So at the beginning of meiosis, the cells, the total number of chromosomes for a particular individual will be what's called diploid. Di means two, N is the number of chromosomes. So for a human, the diploid number would be 46. So think about it, the total number of chromosomes. So like I said, you're going to notice that it's going to go through PMAT for meiosis like it did for mitosis. Now you'll notice that there is a number, Roman numeral 1, behind prophase. Very important that you indicate is it prophase 1 or prophase 2 because meiosis goes through PMAT twice. It's a, pretty much the same, but there's a couple of differences. The first is prophase. We've not experienced this when we looked at mitosis. So during prophase one, we have a very unique situation called crossing over. And we'll look at a diagram in just a second. But in mitosis, that's why all the um, offspring are similar or clones to the parents. During meiosis, we have some genetic variation and it's due because of crossing over. So what's going to happen is the chromosomes, excuse me, the chromosomes is no longer identical to the original paternal or maternal chromosome. So looking at this diagram, we have the homologous or homologous chromosomes. Um, you can either say homologs or homologous chromosomes. Either one is fine. But we'll notice that we have the membrane disappearing or breaking down, just like in prophase for mitosis. But now we have our crossing over. Let's go to this diagram. The A, B, and C are the genes on the chromosomes. It's going to go through replication. Here is where crossing over occurs. This can happen on either end. It just happens to be on the lower end. And you'll notice it has A, B, and then the C crossed over the lighter color green of the capital letters. When they break off and attach to the new chromosome, I look here and I have A, B, capital C, A, B, lowercase c. And you can see it's rewritten here. We call those the gametes. Now after prophase one, we have metaphase one. The same thing is going to happen. Meta means middle. So the homologs are going to line up at the equator or down the middle of the cell. Now you notice it's not the chromosomes, like in mitosis, one per spindle fiber. Now we have the homologous chromosomes. So we have, they match up. So this would be like a pair of shoes and a pair of shoes, okay? And we'll notice the different coloration, that's because of crossing over. Next we have anaphase one. Now during this time, when we looked at anaphase and mitosis, the actual chromosome split into chromatids and moved toward the poles. But for anaphase one, it's simply the homologs or the homologous chromosomes that are separating. They do not divide. The chromosomes have not divided yet during anaphase one. Then we have telophase one. During this time, you'll notice I started off with one cell and now I have two individual reproductive cells and meiosis one results in homologs separated into two cells. Now, you need to know that it starts over again, but now we have phase one is complete, and you'll notice that the mitotic division reduced the chromosome number from 4N to 2N. Okay, so very similar to mitosis. So it should be meiotic division, excuse me, not mitotic, so you need to correct that. Okay, prophase two, 
we started over. It's a very short phase. Uh, lots of times um, instructors will leave this out because it is so short. The key here is that there is no additional crossing over. Crossing over only, only occurs during pro phase one. That is the only time it occurs. So you see here we got two individual cells and we have the homologs that have been separated. During metaphase two, now this is exactly like mitosis in terms of how the chromosomes line up, one chromosome per spindle fiber. They attach at the centromere, the part that holds the two chromatids together. Then we move into anaphase two. The centromere split the chromosomes. Now we have chromatids, so they move toward the poles. And then finally, telophase two. As you can see, we started with one cell. After meiotic division one, we had two cells. And then after meiotic division two, we now have four cells. And each have two chromosomes in each. So the result is four haploid. That's a new word. Haploid means half the number of chromosomes. So in this case, it would be sperm and egg. So from every one sperm, you can have four that's generated and each one will contain a single set of chromosomes. So haploid, half the number of chromosomes, and in each case, humans would have 23. So for eggs, we see that cytoplasm does not always divide equally. So if I start here, here's my primary, um, anytime you see OO site, OO refers to an egg, site means cell, so the primary and when it divides, go after meiotic division one, you'll notice that this cell gets all of the cytoplasm, and this cell has no cytoplasm. They are called polar bodies. We'll cover that later. But if there's no cytoplasm, then there can be no cells, no um, genetic material inside. So these cells cannot be fertilized, because remember, these are eggs. When I go through meiotic division two, you notice I have four cells, but three are polar bodies, and the egg gets all of the cytoplasm. This is the only one of the four that can be fertilized by the sperm. I know that was real quick. If you need to go back and review it, um, hopefully it was reviewed because we've already covered this through mitosis. Hope you enjoyed. Thank you.